Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about orbital motion. This is an add-on topic 10 HL uh, section, which is going to add on to um, essentially what we've done with circular motion and some of the ideas in fields. So we're going to look at uh, something in orbit, such as the space station here, look at its orbital speed, and as well as its orbital energy, um, as well as talking about something called escape speed. Okay. So here we go. The idea from circular motion that you want to be familiar with just from applying our, our rules for centripetal force is for an object in orbit, the force of gravity is the force causing it to move in a circle. It is the centripetal force. The sum of all the forces towards the center of the circle is just the force of gravity. So we say gravity acts as the centripetal force. So a satellite, um, not to scale here, but a satellite orbiting the Earth, um, you know, we know is moving, its velocity is tangent to its circular path, so it's going this way at this instant, but the Earth is tugging it to the left with its uh, force of gravity, which is going to cause the satellite to turn ever so slightly, and so on and so on. So the force of gravity is the centripetal force, and we can figure out, I think we looked at this in the circular motion video, but we can figure out how quick it's going to move by doing um, mv squared over r for my centripetal force, because that's essentially net force equals ma. And for the force of gravity, we can use lug, the law of universal gravitation, gm1 m2 over r squared. Well, wouldn't you know when you plug all that in and things cancel out, we get this equation. Um, again, I think it's uh, fully derived in the earlier video, but... Uh, mv squared over r equals lug will get you there. And what we find is v is equal to the square root of g times m over r. Well, as luck would have it, you don't have to derive it every time. It's in the data booklet. That's in topic 10. So orbital speed equation is in the data booklet. It's so handy. This circular motion problem specifically is so handy that we just take the solution and use it as an equation. Um, okay, so we're talking about the orbital speed of a thing depends on the universal constant of gravitation, which is never changing, uh, capital M, the mass of the object being orbited. So in this case, it would be the mass of the Earth. And R, the distance from the center of the planet. Uh, oops, sorry, cut off there. Meters, of course, for distance. Do watch your units there. You're almost always going to get kilometers or something like that, and you do need to convert to meters, so be careful. Of course, we want meters per second. Okay, so the... Um, Mass of the Earth is the only thing that matters. So it doesn't matter how big the satellite is. If you place it at a certain spot, it's going to go a certain speed. You could have the space station here. Or you could have the astronaut next to the space station. They're both orbiting at the same speed because it only depends on the mass of the Earth. The mass of the thing orbiting cancels out. All right, so that's the equation you can use right in topic 10 whenever you need to know how quick something's moving while it's in orbit. And here you go, here's an example problem. This is a good one, a classic one. We have what's called geostationary satellites all around the Earth. And because the speed of the satellite depends on how far away it is, there's one sort of magic spot where we can place these satellites where they're going to orbit with the same exact period as the rotation of the Earth. And so these will always stay above the same location. Um, these are usually used for communication satellites. They're very easy to uh, ping. Um, antenna that talk to these satellites don't need to move. Other satellites that change their position in the sky, you need a tracking um, antenna, which is much more expensive and, and difficult to make. So these are really convenient and useful. You can look up in the night sky and every all the time, this satellite will be in the same place uh, from like the equator, say. So we could use some of that information and figure out the orbital radius of these satellites. Believe it or not, except for some maybe very common numbers that you know by heart, uh, the mass of the Earth is really the only new piece of information that you need here to solve this problem. So give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to ask you to try this problem. You should see some kind of solution and possibly some hints uh, up on Schoology, but you're going to give this problem a shot. Uh, and see how it goes. There's some figuring out to do in terms of how to manipulate this and, and math it. But you want to be able to apply those ideas of orbital motion. 
does for fun too. This is on Schoology as well, but there's a great map, an interactive map of all the satellites around the Earth. Here it is. Um, and you can see, so there's all these different types of satellites and we can see them color coded. So there's the Earth, all these dots are satellites, real satellites that are actually orbiting the planet. And we can see there's a lot nearby, there's a couple spread out, but there's this one very, um, very pronounced ring. That's the geostationary ring. That's where all of these geosynchronous satellites live. This one specific distance away. That's what those satellites are. So there's a ton of them out there because this is a very convenient like radius. Uh, if I place a satellite here, it's always staying over the same location. So there we go. Those satellites are always staying there. All right, so give that problem a shot. Um, perhaps, you know, pause the video, try it out, check on school, see how it's going.